Welcome to week two of the Fractured series. We're looking at different sins that can fracture our relationships in our marriages and with our kids, uh, with our families, with our, uh, with our co-workers, and certainly even in church. Last week, we tried to look at how greed can get in there and, and can mess up your priorities and, and hurt your ability to relate deeply with other people. But tonight, uh, or today, I want to cover this idea of, of pride and how pride can get in there and, and can mess things up. Now, pride, uh, of course, is, can be positive or, or negative. Uh, uh, it's okay if a, a contractor has some pride in the work that she's done. I mean, you, you, look, at, uh, you know, look at the house afterward and say, I built that and, and feel a certain surge. That's okay. In fact, I think that's to be, uh, to be commended. It, it, it's normal if a, a student studies really hard and then at the end of studying really hard, uh, they, they get a good grade and, and he feels real proud about that. Well, that's a great thing. I mean, that's the kind of thing as a parent that you, that you want to encourage. I mean, hard work and when it leads to achievement, it's okay to get a little surge of, of something there. And it's okay to have pride in your family or, or pride in, 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 a, in, in a relationship. I, 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 when it was kind of first talked to me uh, about it, I, it was a, a young man goes to pick up his girl for the for the prom and, and, and it's the first date and she comes down the stairs and she's nervous and he's like, whoa, so he sees her and, and she feels a little surge of pride and that's good. And he feels a little surge of pride when she's with him all night long and that's good. And, and none of these things are, are bad. It's, it's okay to have some self-esteem. Where pride gets into trouble and where pride becomes a problem, uh, biblically speaking, in and, 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 and terms of sin, is when you start thinking too much of yourself or, and it's kind of related, you start thinking too much about your position compared to everybody else. You're not really content to be you. Uh, you're worried about how you rank, how you stand up with others. Um, chickens do that. If you take 10 chickens and put them into a pen, and they're 10 strange chickens who have never never known one another before, you know, the kind of uh, chickens who have been in their own in their own world. You know how chickens are. Anyway, put the chickens together in a pen like that, and, and, and they'll start to peck at one another. And, and sometimes it's a, a short process, and sometimes it takes a little bit of effort, but they will establish a pecking order. Uh, and when it's all established, then chicken number one, whoever that is, knows that they get to eat first, and they know that they get to, to go to the water first, and they get to lay down wherever they want to. Uh, it's up to them. They're chicken number one, and nobody can contend that. Chicken number two can almost do that, but they just have to be clear chicken number one. As long as they let chicken number one go first, they can pretty much boss the rest of it. And what you want in, in, a, in a situation like that is to not be chicken number 10. Because if you're chicken number 10, then everybody's pecking on you. Everybody's telling you that you're, you're in the way. Everybody's a little frustrated with you, and you just deal with that all day long. And when it's chickens, of course, it's not that big a deal. But when it's people doing that sort of thing, when people are, are, are constantly pecking at one another, trying to get ahead, well, that leads to all sorts of problems in relationships. It leads to bragging and, and to vanity. It leads to stubbornness. You know, where somebody just won't listen or they just can't see any sort of a reason, at least to arrogance and, and, and a dismissal of others. It leads to bullying. It leads to a refusal to accept any sort of a counsel. And, and ultimately, it makes a heart hard with God. I mean, a person who is really concerned about their place all the time, they have very little time to be humble and to serve and to do all the different things that, that, that's really required to have a great relationship. And so when we talk about stuff that can fracture a relationship, pride comes in pretty high on the list. Jesus, notably, uh, didn't do that. He says about himself that I'm humble and gentle in heart uh, in Matthew chapter 11, that he's, he's, he's just wired different than we are. And Paul, thinking about Jesus, was kind of moved to, to write uh, what in a lot of people consider to be poetry, when he's talking about Jesus and, and, and what he was about. Now, I wanted to read that to you tonight. It's in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 3 to verse 11. He says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility value others above yourself. And that word values kind of an important word. I mean, uh, give them due consideration. It doesn't mean that you have to necessarily believe they're better than you, but you treat them like they're, like they're, they're above you. You know, you treat them great. You treat them like you'd like to be treated if it was turned around. Now, I don't think I have to get too deep into this to say that if every marriage was two people doing this, then there'd never be another divorce. If, if every family 
was filled up with people who did this, well, there'd never be another family breakup. There'd never, never, never be another church split. I mean, if, if you could get people to do this, but of course, it's hard, right? Because the, the worry is that you'll do it. You'll value them, but they won't value you. You'll be compassionate and kind to them, but they won't be compassionate or kind to you. You'll give the extra mile, but they won't. And that's always the risk in this thing. And you might wonder, well, who, who could possibly uh, live like this? And that's where Paul turns it around. He says, in your relationships with one another, you need to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Jesus did. Jesus does. I mean, he's in, in heaven now and, and has all the power in the world, but he still listens to us and he still loves us and he still, he still follows what we're up to. He cares. I mean, he still serves you, even now on, on the other side. Um, he says in your relationships, you want to have the same mindset that he had. He says, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage or to be grasped or to be held on too tightly, but rather he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. This word being is an interesting word. Uh, John Ortberg has a long study on it, and he quotes another uh, Bible teacher named Gerald Hawthorne. It's, th- th- this, this, uh, it's a participle there. It, it's a circumstantial uh, 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 participle, which means it can be taken a couple of different ways. Uh, it could be that that being there is, uh, is, uh, is causal, is causal. And if it means it's causal, then it would almost have the idea of because. Like uh, being in the very nature of God uh, uh, because he's just like God, he didn't hold too tightly to it. Or uh, that word being can be more concessive. Uh, uh, concessive would kind of have more the idea of in spite of, right? In spite of the fact that he was just like God, uh, uh, he didn't hold on too tightly to it. Now, most people, when they read this thing, kind of gravitate and think, well, it probably means concessive. In spite of the fact that he was God, he took uh, he on the role of a servant, which would which, which, which imply that it wasn't really how he was, but he wanted to teach us something. It's not really how he is, but he wanted to show us a little something, right? Teach us a, another way to live. But that's not normally how the word is used, right? Like, like a person could say, being a Yankees fan, we expect to go to the World Series. And when they say it that way, they mean causal. It's normally a causal deal. Because we're so talented, we expect to be there every year. If I say, because I'm a, being a Reds fan, I expect to go to the World Series, people will chuckle. And, and because it's concessive then, in spite of the fact I'm a Reds fan, we expect. But, but it's, but, and, and that gets a chuckle because it's rare, right? It, it's, it's not normally how it's used. Normally, that word is, is causal. Well, okay, well, that's. That's instructive and that's pretty powerful because, because if, if that's real, then this is how God is. I mean, when he came to earth, he took the nature of a servant because of course he did. I mean, that's what God does, right? Well, okay, now if that's true, then, then, then it means that this whole world that we live in is built by a God who operates and sees things that way. And that the only way you're really going to be able to, to live the life you need to live is to embrace his mindset, to embrace how he sees it. He's the one who built it. He made the rules. And, and when you live it the way it's designed, well, then you, well, look what he did. Uh, the, the next thing, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So it's called the emptying of Jesus. He, he just kept taking the lower spot. He just kept going deeper. He was a, a, a man, and then he became a servant, and then he humbled himself to even to die on a cross for us. And therefore, because he was willing to give so much, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name above every name at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven, earth, and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Again, if you take that first idea as a concessive idea, right? Then you say, okay, sure, that's what he did. He, he served for just a little while. Now he's got the reward in heaven. He's probably bossing people around, right? Now in heaven, it's, it's, all, it's all turned around. But that's not normally how the word is. See, I think even in heaven, Jesus still has time to listen to the prayers of a scared teenager. He still has time to listen to an atheist who has spent his whole life running away. 
but in that one moment finally cries out to God. He, he's got a heart for the broken. He doesn't quit on us. He doesn't stop. He still serves. J Jesus, who has all the reason in the world to have pride, has none. And he sets as an example for us that we should be that way too.